this pot, I would say this is probably between 80 and 100 euros worth of plants here. So, sorry, it's coming home with me. Hello everyone, welcome to my balcony garden. Today's video is another video from the Balconia Diaries series. This is a series I started this year in 2023 and it's all about where I film things I'm doing on the balcony for the first time, so planting things for the first time or growing certain plants. Today's video is all about hellebores grown in pots. So we're going to look at all the care requirements, soil, watering, light. I've never cared for hellebores on the balcony. I have not worked because we plant them out into the open soil. Know how to care for them there, but in a pot, I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite similar. But we're just going to look at all of their needs and let's get started. And it's raining. We'll just go with it. So let me tell you about this pot of hellebores. At work, the florist was throwing this out, or they were recycling it. And I was like, what are you doing? And she said, yeah, we don't have enough space and no one's buying it. And it's been sitting here for months, so we need to make space for new stock, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I am going to take it. Because hellebores are not cheap. This pot, I would say this is probably between 80 and 100 euros worth of plants here. So, sorry, it's coming home with me. In all my care videos, I always talk a little bit about the plant itself, the morphology of it. So if you're not interested in that and you just want to get to the care bits, you can skip forward. Hellebores are these stunning, evergreen, hardy, flowering perennials. They're native to Europe, Turkey, Afghanistan and East Asia. And what is so special about hellebores is that they're the one of the first or earliest perennials to bloom in the start of the season. So they actually start, some varieties can start even blooming in December and they will bloom all the way through until spring. So they just provide pop of colour, a bit of interest in a winter garden. Look at that face, oh my days. They're very low maintenance, they're also very versatile. They're ideal for a shaded mixed border. They like shade or partial shade. Or if you have a woodland area in your garden or growing space, also they're gonna love that there. They grow well in the open soil and of course also well in pots. And they are a great source of nectar for the pollinators. Botanically speaking, they have really interesting flowers. So this actually, these are not the petals, they're something called sepals and they actually protect the rest of the flower. And inside here, this is where the nectar comes and lots of different pollinators can um, take this nectar. It's not specific to any one species and it's just fabulous. So let's look at how we care for hellebores in pots now. We're in January and it's time if there are any old leaves from the previous season, you can cut them right back to the bottom here. Ideally, you would cut these leaves off at the end of the growing season, so in, Feb in, sorry, in November. Hellebores are susceptible to a fungus called hellebores leaf spot fungus. It's similar to rose leaf spot, or it's like a black spot that comes on the leaves. So if you cut the, the leaves off in November, it's going to reduce the chance of spreading this fungus if the plant has it. It also just makes the plant look a lot more tidy. And you can see the flowers are much more obvious now in the buds, and you can also see there's all this new foliage coming too. So it's allowing space for them to grow. In terms of soil, they like rich, moist, but free draining soil. They do like a neutral to slightly alkaline pH. If you can imagine, hellebores also grow in forest floors. The soil is very rich with humus, leaf mold. So as ever, if we repl replicate the natural environments of our plants, they're gonna thrive. So if I get to the point where I'm going to repot this one, definitely going to mi mix in some organic matter or compost. This is going to help boost the plant and its growth. Light, well, I actually already mentioned it, it can take partial to full shade and still bloom beautifully. They can receive sun, um, an early morning sun or up until 12 p.m. It can tolerate it because the sun isn't too warm. But after that, the afternoon sun is going to be too hot for them. So when we come to watering, in spring and autumn, make sure that the soil remains moist but never saturated because they're actually growing at this point. In summer, this is their dormancy period, you can ease up on the watering but never let the pot dry out. When it comes to fertilising, we can fertilise them two times throughout the growing season, so the first in early spring, the second one in autumn. I would use different liquid fertilisers though because they are growing in a different way. So in spring I would use one that really supports blooming flower growth and in autumn you can fertilise again but one that concentrates on growth rather than blooming. And when it comes to pots I will always use a liquid fertiliser, I just find out that it's easier. So make sure you get a good quality organic one and the hellebores are going to thank you for it. 
pruning. Well, again, I mentioned pruning before. So in November, when the season is coming to an end, cut off all the old leaves. This is going to also open up the plant and allow more space for the flowers and leaves to receive light, to photosynthesize and all that stuff. And when the blooms have finished growing, you can cut right back down to the end of the stalk there. In terms of pests and diseases, I did mention the leaf spot. Pests are apparently not much of an issue. There can be a bit of slug or snail damage or they sort of go underneath here, underneath the plants here. You can just remove them with your hand. Also aphids can use them as a host plant and I do have issues with aphids on the balcony. I usually have some sort of trap plant on the balcony and nasturtiums are great for that. Um, they attract all the aphids and it's just the most terrifying thing we've ever seen. I'll lift up a nasturtium leaf and there's just like 500 little aphids there. Anyway, it works. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on that. They don't, the aphids, I don't think they will, yeah, they don't penetrate the flower at all or the plants. They just use them as a host plant. So it's good to keep that in mind. So for transplanting and dividing, I would avoid that because they really don't like it. If you do want to do it, however, do it in autumn. And if I am going to divide these plants at any point, I'm gonna be very, very gentle. I'll probably remove all the soil and then gently remove the roots from each other because there are separate plants in here right now and they're probably all tangled. So if I'm gonna do that, I will do it with immense amount of care. And one important thing to remember is hellebores are toxic to humans and animals. I have again read in diff from different sources that animals seem to have this sixth sense about what plants they should consume or not consume. It's never really an issue and also, I mean, if you don't start munching the plants, I think you'll be fine. So that was my hellebore care guide for pots. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you would like to support the channel, subscribe. And if you're growing hellebores for the first time, if you have any tips, comment down below. I send you all my good vibes and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.